Please welcome Mr. Spencer Pan, Corporate Vice President and the President of Great China for AMD. 让我们欢迎 AMD 全球副总裁兼大中华区总裁潘晓明先生来为我们致辞。Hi, 各位朋友们，大家早上好 ，Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of AMD Greater China, I'm pleased to welcome everyone here at Computex Taipei.、Uh, as we all know, Computex. Is one of the largest computer and technology show in the world. So, as a leading company in the industry, AMD really recognizes and values the Computex great impact and influence. So that's why we hold global press conference here today to share the latest technologies with everyone in the world. So today we are going to introduce the exciting details. Of a lot of the 2016 AMD products, that will be including、uh, the launch of the seventh generation of A series APU, and also we'll talk about how our innovations will support our partners to develop the high-level computing experience for the consumers. And、uh, in the meantime, and I think everyone has a great opportunity. To experience immersive VR demos powered by AMD latest technology. So now it's the greatest pleasure today. I I would like to introduce Dr. Lisa Su, President and the CEO of of our AMD, to speak on the focus strategy and AMD innovations to with we all of us. So let's join me to welcome Lisa to the stage. Welcome. Taipei, 大家好。For those of you on our webcast, we have standing room only here in Taipei, and we are extremely excited to be here today to talk to you about our 2016 products. If you think about Computex, it really is the center of the universe when we talk about PCs, gaming, new technologies. And it's where all of the partners in the ecosystem come together. So we have a great program for you today. It has been a wonderful year start for AMD, and we really view it as just the beginning of what we have to come. So today we're going to talk about a number of things. Our mission in our company is really about building great products. We are engineers. We are innovators. We are about leading edge technology. And if you look at our history. We've always brought out those products that change the industry, starting with the world's first 64-bit x86 architecture, going to the world's first integrated high-performance CPU and GPU into APUs. If you like game consoles today, practically every game console you buy has an AMD APU in it. Over 50 million units already sold in this generation. And last year, we introduced, actually at Computex, we showed our first. High bandwidth memory graphics chip, and again another first in the industry. Now, as we think about what is AMD about, it's about leadership in technology, plain and simple. It's leadership, 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 and we're going to talk about what we're doing in terms of graphics leadership, and the architectures that we are investing in, the software, the APIs, the partnerships with the industries. And we're going to talk about our computing leadership and what we're doing in terms of scalable architectures, working with the rich OEM and DIY ecosystems to bring platform solutions and software to the market. And the point of all of this investment in leadership technologies is truly to bring out great products that deliver and change the experience for the user going forward. It is about delivering true immersive experiences. It is about changing the way we interact with computing. Everything is about immersive, interactive, really trying to deliver a true different experience. And today we're going to share with you many different technologies that do that. One of the very, very important things for me has been to bring focus to AMD. So nine months ago, we formed the Radeon Technologies Group. And the Radeon Technologies Group has one goal in life, which is to lead the graphics industry for the next 10 years. And we're going to talk about how we're going to drive the VR ecosystem and what we can do to partner with the ecosystem to bring it forward. 
And we're partnering with a number of different people in the ecosystem on the software side, on the hardware side, certainly with Microsoft on DirectX 12 and the ecosystem on Vulkan. These are just some examples of our commitment to bringing the ecosystem together. And we're also going to talk about our seventh generation APUs and how that really expands our computing roadmap, going from consumer to commercial, working with the key OEMs as well as the channel partners. And all of this is about strong product execution. So I know all of you want to get to the products, and we should get to the products. So today at Computex, we're going to talk about our Polaris architecture and what we are able to deliver across Polaris going forward. We're also going to talk about our seventh generation mobile APUs that we're launching today here in Computex. And then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about our future technologies. So with that, let me introduce our senior vice president and uh, chief architect of the Radeon Technologies Group, Raja Kadori. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, welcome, 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 uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends in the audience, friends on the world cast, and uh, everyone watching uh, the show here. We formed the Radeon Technology Group about nine months ago. Uh, one of the first uh, discussions I had with Lisa, the first challenge uh, Lisa gave me was, we are leaders on the console graphics. In game consoles, AMD is number one. The challenge she gave me was, how can we gain market share in PC graphics? Let's do something disruptive for PC gaming. And that was music to my ears, as Many of you know PC gaming and PC hardware is a passion of mine. So when we formed the Radeon Technology Group, we formed it on three principles. And I have those listed here. Passion, persistence, and play, which were actually inspired very much by a PC gamer. You know, if you look at the PC gamer today, they are very passionate about their hardware. There is no other gamer that's as passionate about the details of the hardware, what is in their system, performance, power, specs, than the PC gamer. They are also very persistent. They take new technologies that are initially very, very hard, adopt, and grow. They are not afraid to download drivers every day. That's the PC gamer. They're a very persistent bunch. And they're also fun. They play. And we formed Radeon Technology Groups with these three principles, that we are going to be passionate, persistent, and make it fun about all gaming. And what you're going to see today is what we're doing with PC gaming, our vision for PC gaming, and the set of products that we have coming this year that are going to be very, very disruptive to PC gaming. So what's our vision for PC gaming? It's actually simple, but ambitious at the same time. We wanted to make the next 250 million gamers, PC gamers. We also wanted to make bringing content to the PC very efficient and very cost effective. We wanted the leverage of content from game consoles to the PC. And we also wanted to deliver VR for the first 100 million consumers. That's simply the vision that we have for PC gaming. And what I'm going to talk about today is what are we doing? What is our first step to that? And uh, the first challenge we took was how do we bring real VR to the first 100 million consumers? I'd like to break the problems into what it is that we want to do. The, the, the next thing you need to understand is why. Why did we want to solve this problem? So imagine a world where tens of millions of consumers can only read about incredible PC VR experiences, but can't enjoy them for themselves. Why is that? Because only 1% of the 1.43 billion PCs out there can do VR today. And why is that? Majority of the gamers buy graphics between $100 to 
and there are no VR experiences available in that price range today. And if you look at what the founder of modern VR, Palmer Lucky, posted last year on Twitter, VR will become something everyone wants before it becomes something everyone can afford, which was an inspiration for us. And if you look at some of the recent surveys, 68% of the users say the equipment for VR is too expensive. That's the world we live in today. We have consumers and gamers being left behind. We want VR everywhere. VR should be everywhere. And it should be for everyone. How do we make that happen? We want VR to get to the first 100 million consumers in the next few years. And we want to start that now, not six months from now, not next year. We want the wide accessibility for VR now. So that's the goals we had for the Polaris architecture. And another goal we had beyond consumers is that without content, without amazing VR content, the VR hardware is not very useful. So we need to make the VR application development, VR content development, much more easier and much less expensive. So that was also another goal we had with the Polaris architecture. So we wanted to deliver a high-performance, low-cost, low-power solution to democratize VR, which can make VR possible for anyone who wants it. It can drive VR into retail. It can hit system price points, PC price points, that can be everywhere in retail. And it can grow the market to over 100 million consumers. And also drive VR application development, content development, in a large-scale fashion. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really, really proud to announce the passion, persistence, play of the Radeon Technology Group. We have a product that just does that. And without further ado, this is the Radeon RX 480 that delivers VR to the masses. And the best thing about it is premium VR starting at $199. And this card, this card is beautifully built. It actually is built like a $500 premium card. If you look at the, the design of it, the thermal solution of it, the, the airflow of it are all designed as a really, really expensive high-end card. You can see these designs in our premium cards from the last generation. So we brought a premium design and a premium quality experience to affordable price ranges. So that is Radeon RX 480. Like I mentioned, the PC gaming community loves, are passionate about their hardware. They'd like to know more. They'd like to know what's inside it. So what's inside an RX 480? We have over five teraflops of computing in this beautiful card. And we chose the computing and the bandwidth and the specification of the card based on what the content developers are going to tune for over the next three to four years. So we didn't make it a card that is just for this year. This is a card for the next three to four years with our deep understanding of the content pipeline, what, what is coming. It also has advanced display technologies. It has the HDR support. It's the first display card with 1.4 HDR specification. It is the GPU for the immersive era. And beyond the specifications, it is also our most power efficient GPU ever. It's up to 2.8x performance per watt improvement over our prior generation. It's enabled by both the FinFET technology that we work with and also architectural improvements. Amazing, amazing performance improvement. 
So wait, I spoke about VR, but what about gaming? Radeon RX series also delivers powerful gaming. As you all know, we have been pioneering gaming APIs. We have invested in Mantle, which inspired DirectX 12, which gave birth to Vulkan. And we also made a revolutionary initiative called GPU Open. Why? Remember the goal of bringing the console class gaming to the PC? That's what we have done. We started this investment several years ago, and they are paying off. Hardware is only half the story about PC gaming. Software is more than half the story, and that software investments we made several years ago are paying off. It's amazing to see the, the kind of D D DirectX 12 performance on, on these cards. You'll also see today some really, really interesting Vulkan performance. Along with DX12 and Vulkan, we also have the AMD FreeSync to deliver smooth frame rates. The asynchronous compute feature of the GCN architecture, we have more and more titles taking advantage of this feature and delivering substantial frame rate advantage or, or our competition. And we also have premium multi-GPU support, and you'll see more coming in our multi-GPU support rest of the year. So this card is designed to run premium gaming experiences like Battlefield 1 that you're watching in the back. So wait, this is a season for Doom, right? So no um, video card launch can be complete without something about Doom. So let's um, watch what the developers of the Doom software, the Doom game, have to say about Polaris. Let's roll the video, please. Thanks for having us, and we're sorry we can't be there in person, but we're back here today working on a number of updates for Doom, and specifically Doom running on Vulkan. Vulkan is a modern API with roots in AMD's Mantle technology, and it provides real benefits to both us as developers and the large community of gamers using a wide range of hardware. For us, we can run much closer to the metal, which directly translates to speed. Speed is king, and we anticipate this breathing new life into older graphics cards already in the market, as well as providing 200 frames per second plus on modern high-end cards. Where this really starts to shine is with a new chipset like Polaris. Polaris is affordable, has ultra-low power consumption, and runs Doom very fast. Gamers can look forward to a buttery smooth experience in Doom on Polaris, supporting a wide range of hardware and gamer budgets. Want to play Doom on your laptop on the train home? Polaris plus Vulkan is going to make that possible. When you factor in additional AMD features like true asynchronous compute, custom intrinsic instructions, and combine those with the raw speed of Intex 6, we believe the experience on AMD will be hard to beat across all hardware. These features are currently exclusive to AMD chipsets and combined with what we've already done in Vulkan will bring performance to an even higher level across a wide range of hardware. We are also hard at work on HDR support in Intex 6. We don't quite have anything to show yet, but we expect Doom to look fantastic in HDR on AMD. Bottom line is, you're not going to need a $700 video card to enjoy Doom at fantastic frame rates. So bottom line is you're not going to need a $700 graphics card to enjoy Doom. And you have heard many interesting things from the developers. Exclusive features only available on Polaris. Asynchronous compute. Shader intrinsics. This is the promise of bringing the console quality performance, console, console quality features onto the PC. Amazing, amazing, amazing what they have done with a very power efficient and a very affordable solution. Now, I know many of you have this question, but what else can you do with a $700 solution? There are $700 solutions out there, and some of which have been recently launched. You know, if you can play Doom for $200, what do you do for $700? I mean, you know, graphics is amazing. There is always something more to do. 
So we looked at what, what, what can you do for a $700 solution, right, with uh, some of the content available today. You know, you can play some premium VR. Actually, let's play, let's show, switch to the video, cut to the video before I get to the numbers. Cut to the video. Actually, it's not the video, by the way. These are live cards running. Two systems. One system is $700. I'll tell you what the other system price is in a second. Both running a premium DX12 experience, Ashes of Singularity. And uh, the one on the right is the $700 solution, okay? And the one on the left is something much better. I'll tell you what it is in a second. And as you can see, both kind of, you know, sort of seem to deliver, you know, similar performance. You know, maybe if you're some of the people with really crazy eyes who can spot millisecond differences on, 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 on screen, maybe you'll be able to figure it figure out the precise frame rates. So let's see actually what, what frame rates these, these things are running and uh, what uh, performance they're delivering. So you have the $700 solution delivering 58.7 FPS. You can call it kind of reasonably smooth, 60 FPS, close to 60 FPS. And we have a dual 480 delivering 62.5 frames per second, but that's not the story. The story is the dual 480 costs below $500. And that's not even the half of the story because the dual 480 is actually only being utilized 51%. It has more headroom versus the $700 solution, which is sweating, right? 98.7% fully occupied. So we have much, much more headroom as the developer tunes for the new APIs, and as we tune the drivers for the new Polaris GPU. So that brings to conclusion my Polaris unveil today, and Polaris architecture is a giant, giant step forward for PC gaming and VR, and what um, we have revealed to you today is its capability in, uh, in VR and its, uh, and its price points. You will see a lot more information about the entire Polaris GPU stack coming out in the next, over the next few weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And also I want to thank all of the engineers who worked on Polaris tirelessly over the last two years to get us to this date. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Jim Anderson, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Computing and Graphics for AMD. Let's welcome AMD World's Senior Vice President, General Manager of Computing and Graphics for AMD. Jim Anderson. This is actually my one-year anniversary at AMD. It was one year ago today, uh, it was my first day on the job, and it was Computex. So Computex is always kind of an anniversary event for me. Yeah, I'm very happy. Thank you. Um, hey, so we made some really great progress over the last year, and uh, more importantly than that, uh, we've got a great roadmap of products in front of us to continue to drive innovation in the PC segment. And so that's a little bit of what I want to talk about with you today. Um, but first, I want to think of a little bit about uh, the PC and the role it plays in our lives. Uh, it's, it's an incredibly pivotal device for many, uh, for many people across the world. And if you think about it, it's amazing how much time we spend in the PC experience. 
Um, as Raja mentioned before, there's about uh, 1.4 billion PCs across the world. And if you look at the average time users spend on their PCs, it's about 10, 20 to 30 hours per week. And that translates into, uh, actually a conservative estimate is 10 trillion seconds per day spent on the PC experience. That's an amazing amount of time. And for a technology company like AMD focused on innovating in the PC segment, that's really, that's our inspiration. That's the, the passion that drives us. Uh, we want every one of those 10 trillion seconds to count. We want all of those seconds to be immersive and productive and energy efficient. And that's really what drives our R&D. That's what drives thousands of uh, AMD employees every day. So um, what I'm really proud to talk about today is our latest milestone in that uh, journey of innovation in the PC segment. You know, if you look back over the last five years, we've introduced six generations of new innovation in the mobile, uh, in the mobile processor segment. Uh, starting from our first APUs uh, to the first PC on a chip, we've continued to innovate with every generation. And I'm very excited and very proud today to announce our seventh generation uh, mobile processor. Uh, this is our best mobile product ever to date. I mean, this is a, an incredible device. And uh, I love this die shot here because it gives you a sense of how much technology we pull together to make a product like this happen. So whether it's uh, general purpose processing, uh, graphics processing, processing for video streaming, for audio, memory controller, we pull together an incredible amount of technology into a device that's over three billion transistors. And I'll talk a little bit about what that provides in terms of end user experience today. Um, this. Uh, this product, uh, this product line spans all the way from the premium segment, so premium notebooks, all-in-ones, to the value-oriented segment as well. And we'll, I'll talk later about a brand new product we're introducing today that's really focused on the, the more value-oriented uh, segment. But you know, regardless of the segment uh, we're focused on, our mission is to make those 10 trillion seconds immersive, productive, and energy efficient. And today you'll hear not just from me, but you'll hear from some of our key partners as well. You'll hear from uh, Dell, HP, and Microsoft about how we're working together to make that PC experience amazing. So when we say we're in every pixel, what that is is that's really a reflection on AMD as a technology leader in visualization technology and graphics technology. And uh, some of the technology Raja talked about in the prior section, that same technology we integrate in our mobile uh, processors. And that creates incredible immersive experiences. Just one example is uh, high definition video streaming. So high end 4K Ultra HD streaming. If you're doing video streaming or playback on a seventh generation AMD se series processor, it's an amazing experience. And that's partially because some of, the, some of the technology that we've integrated into the device itself at the hardware level. So we have specific accelerators to make sure that 4K video streaming is amazingly smooth, energy efficient. So uh, video acceleration technology for HEVC, support for AMD FreeSync technology to make sure all of the frames are very smooth. So a smooth and power efficient experience. So whether you're streaming uh, from Netflix or Baidu, you know that uh, with an AMD processor, you're always getting a great video streaming experience. Uh, also, you know, gaming, uh, that's a huge passion for us in AMD. Uh, the gaming technology that uh, is in our discrete graphics, we also integrate in our mobile processors as well. So I just want to give you an example of uh, gaming and some of the uh, technology advantage we have here. So if you look at that newest seventh generation series FX processor uh, versus the Intel Core i7, you're getting 50% more graphics performance from an AMD FX processor than our competitor. That's an amazing amount of technology differentiation and that absolutely translates into real gaming experience, a fluid, uh, very power efficient experience. We've also in, uh, incorporated other key gaming technologies like uh, frame rate target control or virtual super resolution. So key technologies to make that experience very smooth, very, uh, very compelling. So let's see just a couple of examples of this. I wanna, the first example I wanna show is a 4K video streaming example. This will show you how uh, 4K video streaming on an AMD processor is incredibly smooth and power efficient.
All right, hey, the, the next example is a gaming example. So League of Legends is one of the most popular esports games out there. Tens of millions of people play every day. Uh, a game like League of Legends plays fantastic on the new AMD processor. Let's take a look at that smooth gaming experience. So we're also focused on productivity. We want those AMD customers to finish their work as fast as possible so we can get back to those immersive experiences. So over the last couple generations, we've introduced a tremendous amount of improvement in our processor performance. With the seventh generation series processor, we're now 50% higher CPU performance than we were just a couple years ago. And that translate direct, translates directly into productivity improvement. So if you look at, uh, Excel uh, file crunching or, or spreadsheets, that's now 28% faster. If you look at uh, photo editing or uh, file compression, that's now over 40% better. So that CPU innovation is translating into real productivity gains. Now the real challenge is to deliver that immersive technology and that, uh, and that productivity improvement, but to continue to do that in an ever-increasing uh, energy efficiency. And so we've introduced new technologies to drive energy efficiency even further. So a couple of technologies in the seventh generation are uh, in, uh, support for low power DDR4 memory, a uh, new version of adaptive voltage and uh, frequency scaling. So the combination of the performance improvement and the power efficiency improvement together from generation six to generation seven is a 25% performance per watt improvement generation over generation. That's a huge boost in, uh, in this generation. So let's take a look at another example. This example will show you, uh, it'll show you how different parts of the processor are used to generate very good power efficiency in, uh, in the processor. Go ahead. <laughs> It's not just the high end that we're focused in, we're also focused in the value segment as well. If you look at the, uh, the part of the market that sells for PCs under $400 US, that's a huge part of the market. And we wanna take that same innovation and technology and bring that to that segment of the market as well. That's why today we're announcing the A9 series of processor. This brings our excavator high performance class core from the high end and brings it into this value segment, offering just a tremendous amount of value. Uh, if you look at the improvement from the prior generation to the current generation, it's a 50% performance improvement in general processing and almost a 40% improvement in graphics processing. So we're bringing a tremendous amount of value to this segment. So whether it's a, uh, it's a processor that's at, uh, at the high end for FX or A10 or an A9 for the value-oriented segment, you're getting great technology, a great experience with AMD. So I'd, also, I'd like to uh, now introduce uh, one of our partners. I'd like to ask Matt Perry to come and join me on stage to talk a little bit about the partnership between Microsoft and AMD. Right, thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks a lot, Jim. Um, hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. I appreciate the invitation to come to this uh, great event. Um, First, I can't help it, I'm an engineer, I work in the Windows uh, engineering uh, group, and you know these announcements today, they're awesome. The inner gaming to me just can't wait to do some high-end testing on Vulkan in the factory. So 
Um, great, great innovation and great engineering. And that is precisely what we see at Microsoft with our relationship with AMD. It's a very close collaboration and probably a lot more work together than anybody would imagine in order to bring the best of Windows 10 features to all the great devices that, that are built and you all use, um, but also to create a very premium experience entertainment-wise that's immersive, fun, uh, quick, um, and at the right, right price points. So Microsoft and AMD have a long history of working together. We've done some incredible work in gaming on consoles and in PCs for many, many years. Um, and I actually came into the Windows organization three years ago. It was kind of ground zero of what became Windows 10. And I remember one of the first people to call me, because uh, my role is um, engineering for the ecosystem and hardware and that sort of thing, was from AMD. And AMD calling me, the new guy in, and saying, what can we do more together? How can we support your efforts for Windows 10? And ever since then, um, deep, deep collaboration, like we've always had before, although it was relatively new to me. Um, and working strong together to make Windows 10 as great as possible. So just a little bit, I'm from Microsoft. I've been remiss to talk a little bit about Windows 10. So the first thing I always like to do is, how many people in here are running Windows 10 today? All right, so that's a, that's a good proportionality. Uh, how many people like Windows 10? Okay, if there's things that you find in Windows 10 that don't quite meet your expectation, buy all those, uh, those, that feedback. Uh, another great experience you can do, there's millions of people that are under a Windows Insiders uh, program that allows you to get early access to new operating systems and test out features, file bugs, to do all the right things. Uh, we want Windows 10 to be the best experience possible. So, you know, um, re recently we announced that there were 300 million um, active devices on Windows 10. Um, I think it was about 10 months ago since we launched Windows 10, so that's a great number. We're shooting up and to the right in terms of the number. We have a goal for uh, 1 billion Windows 10 devices in the coming future here, and we're on track. Uh, and not only are not only are these devices uh, activated, but people are using it. Cortana, one of our popular features that is your uh, personal assistant, um, she's, at, she's answered uh, 6 billion questions to date. Um, people are gaming like crazy on Windows 10. There's been 9 billion hours of active gaming on Windows 10 since, since the launch. Um, and we've worked, particularly on Windows 10, we worked with AMD to um, enable our base level features. There was a lot of new features in Windows 10, VX12, where there was an incredible amount of Monaco engineering, feedback both ways to make the best experience as possible. Also Cortana, um, Windows Hello with fingerprint, uh, just a wide variety of things that we've, we've worked together. And as we move forward, Microsoft, into our Windows 10 anniversary update, which will be available this summer, we've been working with AMD um, on their technologies, and in this case, the Gen 7 uh, mobile part, to make sure that we're, we're really coordinated and co-engineering to get the best uh, experience as possible for the designs that, that we do. And we've listed off here a few of the features of Windows that we are uh, working closely together. And these aren't just the obligatory list of, you know, hot, of things that Windows does. These are areas where there is deep engineering collaboration. I get reports daily on engineering progress on a wide variety of uh, features and functions going back, back and forth. We work very hard to make sure that just the simple things like watching a video um, is a great experience. And you're probably like, well, how can that be hard? Well, as form factors get more innovative and power becomes a more challenge, there's actually a lot of engineering we do together in order to make a great immersive experience um, with entertainment, um, like movie playback, but also add a power that allows you to get the maximum battery life out of your, out of your device. Um, you know, we have some great new features coming in our anniversary update. It's been described before. Um, you know, we focus very hard on making the Windows 10 experience uh, more, you're more connected to the experience. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Um, over 70% of people spend an hour a day with a pencil and paper. Over 30%, it's like over three hours a day. So, wow, wouldn't it be nice that a Windows 10 device has the ability to have ink as a base level feature? Not only that, having ink uh, along with simultaneous touch so you can draw and do all the things that you naturally do. Um, so that's a, 
a great feature to look forward to coming up. We also are investing, and we have as part of Windows 10, investing in bringing the best of gaming onto Windows 10. And, you know, our Microsoft Studios is busy with uh, titles that will be released on, on Windows 10. In fact, right now you can download Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. Um, it's an open beta, and you can try it. How many people here have tried Forza on a PC? All right, a few of you. I mean, it is an incredibly immersive experience. It reminds you that you're running on a console, um, and we'll have more on those over time. In addition, we've worked with AMD. Well, that's a great example of where we've worked with AMD on the DX12 driver to make sure that thing's smoking, get the maximum frames per second, manage power. Uh, but also, we're working on really great technology that allows you to use your uh, PC and stream games from the Xbox One. Um, you know, I've carried over my gamer tag from Xbox onto the PC so I can break fast with high schoolers. Uh, I don't do very well, but I, I do have fun doing that. And so we've worked very closely with AMD on a lot of uh, engineering um, optimizations. And um, Lisa and Raja and Jim and everybody, I want to say thank you. Uh, for the dedication that you've had with Microsoft, there is an incredible amount of engineering that occurs on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we really appreciate it. It makes Windows shine. Um, we, get our, we get devices out there that really shine, that allow you to um, enjoy a premium experience. Um, and we look forward to the great things that the uh, seventh gen mobile processor with our upcoming Windows 10 anniversary update will bring to everybody. So thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So I'd now like to uh, ask Joe Tan from HP to join me on stage. Thanks, Joe. Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the great systems we're building between HP and AMD. Yes. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I wanted to start by talking about uh, the, um, the mainstream products. So we know that the uh, millennials make out the largest work segment today. And when we double click millennials, what do they want? They want product that has great design. They want products that match with their lifestyle. So it's, it's more than just color. So when we started working with AMD, we, we think about, oh, AMD has all this horsepower. So, but we need to we take the notch up a little bit and look at how to enhance that with a great design. So if you look at this box, you will see things like, digital threat. Why this is so important? You can actually see this in your sporting good today. They are there. We are taking those fashion design into the notebook so to, to have the emotional connections to the IT devices. Second thing you realize, it's pretty thin. This is a mainstream product. At, at three millimeter more, you, for 15 inch, you actually get an optical drive that start with the A9 CPU all the way up to A12. And you don't have to worry. It comes with the AMD discrete graphic, too. <laughs> OK? Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our premium product. This is the one that we did a lot of work with AMD. And I wanted to thank the engineering team as well as the uh, product team for getting us so many support. Not only they teach us about all these AMD unique features, they allow us to design into the system and enhance that feature for you. Let me start by talking about uh, design first. So this is a convertible design, and it does convert, OK? And we know that millennials like preferences. Some like clamshell, some like convertibles. And I hope this is obvious to you. The screen is bright. Is it? Yes? yes. Yeah. And it's done by uh, direct bonding. Why do we do that? Because you just hear about free sync just now. In order to get that kind of video, you know, enhancement, we wanted to make sure that we give you the best display. It's not just about high brightness. It's about making sure that there is no gap between the LCD to the touch glass. So everything that you see on the LCD, you see it here. And second thing we look at, hmm, in addition to that, we uh, wanted to make sure that all this video streaming, when you are trying to play a game, you actually get very good frame rate. And there is no frame loss, so the, uh, the gameplay is superior. You have that immersive experience. So we enable freezing on this. In addition to that, when you use this product in the tablet mode, you don't have a keyboard. So how do you lock in? 
you lock in with IR camera. So there's an IR camera on this device that you don't have to type in your password. No password lock on. So these products come with the highest NCPU FX that take advantage of all the stuff that you did on the integrated graphic and it's showcased on a product in partnership with all the great display that we put in place. And don't forget, it comes in nine hours of battery life. And for some reason, if you run out of juice, don't worry. We have fast charging on this device. You get 90% of your battery life in 90 minutes, 90 for 90. All right, and early on we talked about the VR, a lot of excitement on the gaming. So in partnership with uh, AMD, we actually have the AMD graphic uh, in our Omen desktop products that we just launched last week. And today you're hearing the new generation of the uh, graphic, and you're going to see that coming in our lineup. Thanks. All right, thank you, Joel. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So next I'd like to ask uh, Ray Wan to join me on stage. Ray's from Dell. Thanks, Ray. Hi, Ray. So Ray, maybe you can talk a little bit about the great systems we're building between AMD and uh, Dell. Yeah, um, but before I get into my notebook, uh, first I want to take the opportunity to congratulate Lisa and her team, right, for an outstanding launch with Polaris and the seventh generation. So, um, you know, great partners, and uh, you probably save the best partner for last. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so let's get over with um, the um, photo taking. Right, so this is the new Inspiron 15 um, uh, 5000 series. Okay, the punchline here is really not 10 trillion seconds, right? <laughs> the punchline here is what uh, Jim has said earlier on. Big core, premium features, and everyday price. So we are very pleased uh, to announce this new product, which is the Inspiron 5000 series at everyday price starting at 399. Um, at that price, um, you could scale that up to um, the uh, AMD uh, seven generation A9, A10, A12, and we leave enough um, headroom to drive a Radeon R7, I almost said RX, by the way, R7 uh, 445 uh, GPU with GDDR5 graphics. So um, I know a lot of uh, us here have no respect for the optical drive, but um, in the 399 space and below, right, our consumers continue to tell us that you know, they need the optical drive. So what we have done with that product, right, is to make one of the thinnest uh, two spindle products out there. Right, we have taken out the cylindrical batteries and flattened out that landscape you see in the palm rest. So you get a really thin profile, right, covered with uh, an amazing uh, IMR. So great products. Um, there'll be more exciting things to come. Um, we're really uh, very challenged and excited working with AMD. Uh, Dell has a wonderful start um, this year, right? Q1, we were number one in the US, number one in terms of uh, the desktop PCs as well, number one in notebooks in Brazil. Um, we are number two overall in China. Commercial PCs also, we are number one in India and Brazil. So we want to continue to partner uh, with um, um, uh, uh, folks like AMD, right, that drives innovation. So you keep inspiring and you keep innovating. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Awesome. So with that, uh, I'll wrap up. So been fantastic to introduce the seventh generation of A-series processors from uh, AMD. So for all those 10 trillion seconds per day, our focus is to make that experience immersive, productive, and energy efficient. And with that, I want to invite our president and CEO, Lisa Sue, back on stage. All right, wonderful, wonderful. You know, I love talking about products, and I love more talking about products with our partners together. So what have we talked to you about today? Computex is really about all of the great technologies that we're coming out. The Radeon RX GPUs, based on our Polaris architecture, really changing the game in virtual reality and PC gaming. And our seventh generation mobile APUs. If you think about this, you heard a few things from us today. You heard 1.4 billion PCs installed base. 
you know that there are approximately 280 million new PCs that are going to come this year. So if you want to hear one thing from AMD, we are committed to innovation in the PC market, both on the discrete graphics side as well as on our integrated APU side. But you know, as always, in the spirit of Computex and the spirit of engineers, it's one thing to talk about today's products, and I am extremely excited to talk about today's products. But we have to talk about one more thing. And when you think about AMD, we talked about our commitment to high performance graphics. We're extremely committed to the entire OEM ecosystem. And I want to thank again our partners um, at HP, Dell, and Microsoft for joining us today. But I also want to give you a very, very important update on our high performance computing, and in particular, our Zen core. So Zen is a very, very special product and project for AMD. Over three years ago, we decided the industry needed another high performance computing CPU. We started from scratch with hundreds of engineers to build an extremely efficient, high performance, low power capability. We taped out Zen early this year we got samples in our lab some time ago, and we've been doing a lot of it, a lot of work on Zen um, over the last a number of uh, months. But today, for the very first time at Computex in Taipei, I would like to introduce you to Zen. So that video was created, edited, rendered, and played back on our new desktop processor with Zen. Let me show you our Summit Ridge processor. There are a lot of cameras in here, so I'm going to take a minute for the web. We love Summit Ridge. We are in the early stages of bring up, but the product looks really good. Really good. Zen is delivering 40% more IPC than our previous generation. This product is eight cores, 16 threads. It is in FinFET technology, and it is integrated as part of our new AM4 desktop platform. The AM4 desktop platform is a return to desktop for our enthusiasts and our performance uh, fans. And if you think about AM4, think about it integrated top to bottom throughout our desktop lineup. So this is Summit Ridge. But Zen for us is not just about one product, and it's not just about one segment. Zen for us is a new high-performance CPU that scales across multiple, multiple market segments. We're starting first in the desktop, and we showed you Summit Ridge. We are also in our Bring Up Labs working very, very hard on the Bring Up of our server version of Zen, and that is also going very well. We expect to sample Zen to our priority customers in a few weeks and more widely available sampling in the third quarter. And then as we bring the high-performance CPU to life, we're also going to integrate Zen with our high-performance graphics in our next generation APUs. So after Bristol Ridge, you will see integrated APUs with Zen and our GPU architectures. And you'll also see Zen across a number of embedded markets, because the power of a grounds-up design is you can really scale it across performance segments, as well as low power across multiple market segments. Zen is extremely exciting. 
We're still early in the bring up, but we feel very good about what we, where we are. You will see much more from us over the next number of months as we go towards launch and talk about what we're doing with our customers. But the customer feedback and excitement around Zen is palpable. And it's the same within everyone at AMD. So with that, I'd really like to summarize what you saw from AMD today. I said that 2016 was a great start for AMD. But actually, you haven't seen anything yet in terms of what we're going to do. Radeon RX GPUs, $100 to $300 price points, enabling a new segment for VR, premium gaming experiences, on shelf June 29th with our FinFET technologies. Extremely, extremely excited about Polaris and our RX series. Seventh generation mobile APUs shipping today. You heard from HP, you heard from Dell. There are a number of systems back there that I would say, you know, I view it as we're starting today, but you will see a number of systems come across over the next couple of quarters. And it's our commitment to our OEM customers and the PC ecosystem. And then the most exciting piece I would say is Zen is alive. Zen is on track. And we are extraordinarily excited about what Zen will bring to the marketplace. So I want to leave you with one important point. Uh, Raja said it earlier. Jim said it as well. We are a high performance technology company. We are focused around engineering. And to deliver a roadmap like this, I could not be more proud of the engineers at AMD working across all of these products and all of these technologies. So today, I have a couple of special people that I'd like to thank. Uh, Luis Castro and Amit Mera, who are sitting there today with our um, Zen boxes. Um, these are two of our Bring Up guys who we brought to Taipei so we could show you Zen uh, in person. And the way we think about it is we want to share our love for the products with all of our fans because we have a great year to come and great technologies to show you. So as we close this press conference, Luis and Amit, thank you. And let's show our fans one more view of Zen. Thank you.